Dino Day is Best Day. In this video, we are testing the controversial topic of 12 hole versus 4 hole fuel injectors. Some people insist there's a difference you can feel, especially at partial throttle. Others say it's all placebo, they're the same. Well, we're going to put this to the test with hard data. We'll be running many tests on a Mustang Dyno, including wide open throttle and partial throttle at steady RPM. We'll also be dissecting the OBD2 data logged during every test and seek out the most subtle of differences within the car's network of sensors. I'll also include comments from a couple experts in the field. Finally, we have a bonus unrelated to the injectors. At the end of our dyno session, we improvised an additional test that has some shocking results. Stick around and see what we found. Before we get too far, I have to acknowledge a few individuals. Dyno testing is not cheap. To make this possible, we had contributions from three people outside of Yoda MD. Financial contributors include I Hate Mud members River Rat Matt and Buckeye Fan. Jimmy, another I Hate Mud member, provided funding and more importantly his own vehicle and a set of 12 hole injectors. The freshly cleaned and tested 4 hole injectors came from the Yoda MD build the LX470 I'm calling Cypress. Here are the injectors in question. In one corner we have the OEM 4 hole injectors. The injectors used for testing here have been freshly cleaned and tested after 216,000 miles in my 06 LX470. The 12 hole injectors were purchased on eBay as remanufactured Denso parts, similarly cleaned and tested. These were OEM spec on some V6 Forerunners and perhaps some other Toyota models that use that same engine. The 12 hole units in this test have about 25,000 miles on them. Not new, but not enough mileage that we expect to see any performance degradation from their use. So, 12 hole versus 4 hole, what's the deal? Why are we bothering with all this testing? Well, the theory is that the smaller holes create better atomization and therefore better utilization of the fuel that's being sprayed into the engine. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. During this test, we're going to show two test methods. One method is your standard wide open throttle pull. If you've seen any dyno videos on the internet or on YouTube, this is it. Put the car in gear, floor it, and hold the pedal down right up to redline and you get a max power value, max torque value, and a general trend of how that power and torque was applied throughout the rev range. It's also common to chart AFR or boost if you're turbocharged. We won't spend a lot of time talking about that in this video, but if you'd like to see more content related to that, check out my Super Dyno video, and I'm sure I'll have more of those coming up as I build that vehicle. The second test method that we're using involves a constant RPM and throttle position. For us, that throttle position is going to be 50%. This method is really cool. The rollers on a Mustang dyno can be controlled by the dyno itself. What I mean by this is that the dyno can push back against the car in test, dynamically. Very cool. The dyno is constantly measuring RPM via an ignition wire and it will vary the load on the rollers to maintain the RPM we prescribe. So we can say hold 2000 RPM and the dyno will make sure that the engine stays there. Essentially the dyno is pushing back against the wheels just enough to maintain that constant RPM. And while it's doing that it's measuring how much power or force is required to do so. This is how we're going to measure partial throttle power, torque, and efficiency because we're going to log fuel flow as well. Here's the dyno operator helping me understand exactly how this works. Is there a term for that sort of test? Um, steady load? Or steady, well, we're holding the RPM. We're not, we're not letting the RPM go over 2,000 RPM. Okay. So, steady in this way. Yeah. Um, it's going to add load to keep it at 2,000, so okay. it won't let the it won't let the engine rev past 2,000. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, okay, so I can take 
up to 600 horsepower with dyno with this dyno and stop an engine. So if I'm at full throttle, up to 600 horsepower, I can just go <laughs> and just pull it down. Okay. So it's sitting there steady at the RPM. That's not you. That's yeah, right. the dyno. Yeah. I'm yeah, just so trying then... to keep it at 50%. Okay. okay. Enough talk. Let's cut to the runs. Seventy to ten. After our planned runs, we realized we could test air filters really easily. I grabbed my used, old paper filter from my 100 series in the parking lot and quickly installed it in Jimmy's car which had a K&N wet oiled filter. The results were crazy. Look at this. No, sorry I'm not going to do that. You have to wait for the end to see that. Hang on. Results. Okay, this is what you're really here for. What makes more power? Is the 12 hole upgrade real? Is it worse? Power and torque. This is the first thing everyone wants to know and probably the most shocking in this test. At wide open throttle, four hole injectors made more power and more torque. But the difference is very small and mostly explained by other factors that we're about to dive into. At 2000 RPM, we see an advantage to the 12 hole injectors by a very small margin. At 3500 RPM, we see an advantage going back to the 4 hole injectors. So, what's the deal? Why are we seeing this? Why does it vary depending on RPM? What's going on? Well, right off the bat, the dyno operator mentioned that hot headers tend to make more power due to improved scavenging of exhaust gases. I was a little skeptical of this, but his idea seemed to pan out as we were going through the testing. Where we thought the engine was a little warmer, we did seem to make a few extra horsepower, and so his theory seemed to make sense. Now here's the data to back that up. On the wide open throttle runs, you can see as the temperature increases, we tend to make more power and more torque. On the low RPM runs, I think what we're seeing there is the intake temperature overtakes the effect of the improved scavenging and as the air is moving slower through the engine it heats up more when the engine's hot and then it's it's just warmer air so i think we're seeing two different effects there at low engine speeds it's the intake temperature that takes over and at higher rpms higher engine speeds what we're seeing is the scavenging effect of the hotter exhaust taking over and helping out and creating more power I do want to reiterate here though, look at these numbers. The variation in power is very, very small, and same with torque. We're talking about really small numbers here. The 2000 and 3500 RPM runs are obviously a bit different than the wide open throttle, but within the same tests, looking at just the wide open throttle tests, or just the 2000 RPM tests, or just the 3500 RPM tests, the min and max power during any of this, during any span of temperature, it's all very, very close. So again, just keep in mind the absolute values we're talking here, there's very little variation. So now that we know what the data says, here's what I heard before we did any of this testing. These are some comments from some professionals in the field that deal with fuel injection or tuning. 
The first is the owner of the local and highly regarded fuel injector cleaning and testing shop. He asked why I was having my injectors cleaned. And I mentioned the 4-hole versus 12-hole test and how we were going to use a clean set of the 4-hole injectors to make sure that they weren't dirty and that they were truly a representation of 4-hole injectors. Well, what I gathered from his response was that a long while back, when single-hole injectors were common, going up to 2-hole or 4-hole helped, at least a little bit, in motorcycles. From 4-holes and up, he seemed skeptical it would make a difference in a car engine. The second person that offered some feedback was the dyno operator, and he was a little less subtle. I'm paraphrasing here, but he basically said, There is no difference, you guys. You are wasting your time. Are you sure you want to pay to run these tests? I can tell you right now, there is no difference. You're not going to see anything. He also said, Any atomization from the injectors gets screwy once it slams into the back of the intake valves in the intake. Well, yikes, okay. We did convince him to continue on with the testing after reassuring him we were doing this for the data and to follow something resembling the scientific method. Uh, and of course, we've got funding from others that are interested in the same thing, so we're here to do this. Let's get some data. Well, it looks like our field experts were right. We weren't able to find much evidence to support the 12 hole injectors offering a bona fide benefit. Now, on to the bonus content. K and N filters. I always wondered how much extra power they really make. I know from many tests online, they tend to allow more dirt into the engine and they release a bit of misting of oil because they're wet filters, and I always thought these were the price of improved flow. I never would have guessed what happened. That's right, we made more power with the paper filter. After some digging in the data, it appears as though the increased power may be from changes in the temperature in the engine, but the power increase does seem to be more than the change we'd expect based on that temperature change, so that's kind of a wordy way of saying, I think the old paper filter actually made more power. So not only does the oiled filter not filter all that well, it also apparently does not flow very well, which sort of defeats the whole purpose. We saw no increased horsepower in this 2UZ according to our testing. If anything, we lost power with the oiled filter. This was a shocker to myself and Jimmy. So in summary, don't worry about the number of holes in your injectors and maybe grab that plain old paper filter next time you pick up oil at the parts store. Thanks again to our contributors, River Rap Matt, Buckeye Fan, and Jimmy. Those people all put their money and or vehicle and parts on the line to help the community take a stab at a scientific approach to this often debated topic. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Check out the other Yoda MD videos and of course leave all your comments below.